Uh, good morning and uh, welcome po sa mga kapatiran uh, at ang mga regular visitors natin this morning sa Sunday School. Uh, it is with joy po na makasama namin kayo ngayong araw na to, the first day of the week, na makasama namin sa pagsamba sa ating uh, Diyos at tagapagligtas. Uh, para sa ating uh, mga mananampalataya this morning, ang mga brethren po, mga ganda rin po sana maalala natin ang mga mercies, past mercies ng ating Diyos this past few days. Na nakaraan na the world has taken most of a, of us no yung best natin san itong araw na to resolve na tayo na ibigay ang ating buong sarili at ibigay itong araw na to sa Dios at uh, maalala rin natin na on this day the first day of the week uh, the Jews found an empty tomb at uh, nagwagi po ang ating Panginoong Hesus sa kamatayan it is a reality na magandang i Uh, i-ano natin sa puso natin, i-alalahanin uh, na itong pagtitipon-tipon natin, inaantay natin na makasama natin at makausap ang buhay na Diyos. Sa, so sa uh, pag-umpisa natin sa pag-worship, please turn your hymnals to hymn number 129 po. Uh, that's hymn number 129. Let us rise as we sing po. Let us remain standing as we pray. 
Indeed, our Lord Christ Jesus, fairest of all, Lord. Sino pa ba, Lord, ang uh, aming kikilingan, Lord? To, to a sinner, Lord, no one is fairer than you, Lord Jesus Christ. In you, O Lord, we have hope. In you, O Lord, we have redemption. And in you, O Lord, we can hope for glory, Lord, in the future. O Lord, uh, nagpapasalamat po kami sa inyong condescending love. Na sa, sa aming mga tao, binigyan nyo kami ng second chance po ng uh, kapatawaran nyo, Lord, na kahit mga anghel po, hindi nyo po binigyan ng ganong pagkakataon, Lord, uh, na kayo ang namatay para sa mga tao, mga kawawang nila lang. O Lord, uh, para sa mga uh, mga tao nyo, mga niligtas, for every redeemed soul in this in this hollow, Lord, uh, we we just, Lord, uh, talagang puspusan, Lord, ang aming pasasalamat sa inyong ginawa sa amin. At tumatayo dito kami na may Mababang puso na may utang na loob po sa inyo dahil hindi namin kahit kailan mababayaran ang biniwis niyo para sa amin. Kaya Panginoon, sa umaga nito, we are hoping that you would meet with us as you did Lord in the olden times sa first day ng week Lord. Okay, pag-usap kayo sa amin, kausapin niyo kami, samahan niyo kami at naway masabi namin we met with you this day O Lord. And Lord, for those who are uh, strangers to the gospel na hindi niyo pa um, na natatanggap sa inyong uh, luklukan Lord uh, patuloy namin silang kinokomit sa inyo na sana na, na yun masumpungan nila ang uh, ang inyong awa sana iligtas niyo sila at uh, tumangkilik sila sa inyong panawagan ng kaligtasan kaya Panginoon lahat ng mga ito tinataas namin sa iyo salamat po Diyos sa pangalan ni Jesus amen Our lesson today sa Sunday School natin comes as an appendix or a supplement to our very brief series on the discovery, use, and exercise of spiritual gifts. Kung nagbabasa tayo ng ating mga Biblia sa 1 Corinthians 12 to 14, which are the chapters on spiritual gifts, no? including 13, which is about uh, the proper motive in the use of spiritual gifts, the chapter on love, mapapansin po nyo dun sa mga chapters na yan that there are gifts of tongues, interpretation of tongues, gifts of prophecy. And the question is, why can't I use those gifts in the church? Why can't I speak in tongues? Why can't I speak in prophecy? Why can't I interpret? tongues. E nakalagay yan doon sa 1 Corinthians 12 to 14. Now, some people believe that those gifts continue. Pero we as a church are of the belief that the scriptures say extraordinary gifts such as tongues, prophecy, and interpretation of tongues and other miraculous gifts have already ceased. Okay? And so this morning, as a supplement to what we have taken about gifts, uh, we will take up We will take up the cessation of extraordinary. Exciting na dahan -dahan. <laughs> The cessation of extraordinary spiritual gifts. Okay. Malapit, gumagana siya eh. 
Just some credits at the beginning, no? Itong message na ito is not really originally mine, no? This is adapted from somebody else's message which he preached at the Strange Fire Conference 2014, okay? The outline is mine, but the content is not mine. Just to give some credits. I, I don't want to reinvent the wheel kasi if I uh, research on these things, no? I will come up with the same thing. So I, will, I don't want to waste my time. Nagawa na niya yung uh, research. Eh. Kaya siya na lang. Mas maganda pa. Okay. Ito sa akin. Hindi nag si Pennington eh. Anyway. Cessation, cessationism defined. Cessationism clarified. Cessationism rejected. And cessationism defended. Uh, first of all, cessationism defined. No? Um, definition of terms, ang ibig sabihin. What do we first mean, what do we mean, first of all, by the term extraordinary spiritual gifts? No? Kasi ang cessation, yung pagtatapos, it's all about extraordinary spiritual gifts. Now, my question is, ano ba yung extraordinary spiritual gifts? Ano bang klaseng mga gifts yun? Okay, alam ba nyo? Yan ang isang example. These are gifts which were given by the Holy Spirit to the Apostolic Church. No? The church when it was being established and the apostles were still alive. Examples of which are the gift of tongues, prophecy, and healing. In other words, they are unique, extraordinary, they are unique and particular to a specific point in time in church history. This, compared with ordinary gifts, such as preaching, deaconing, gifts which we find in the present-day church or the post-apostolic church. Okay? Extraordinary. Kakaibang mga kakayanan. Ito. Ngayon, cessationism, do not confuse this with the Mindanao independence movement. No? Have you heard of that? The Mindanao Independence Movement. Uh -oh. Don't confuse this with that. No, uh, this is not about geopolitics. Iba yung cessationism sa cessationism. Okay, cessationism with an A believes that these extraordinary gifts have ceased. Tapos na. In other words. The Holy Spirit has ceased giving these gifts to the post-apostolic church. Noon ibinigay, nung buhay pa mga apostol, ngayon, napatay na mga apostol, established na ang church ni Kristo, hindi na ibinibigay ng Holy Spirit. The exercise, therefore, of these gifts in the church today, no, and we don't believe, there are, has no warrant in the scriptures and is not normative of church practice. Okay? Number three, those who believe that these extraordinary gifts continue are called continuationists, obviously. No? Or, sabi ng iba, non-cessationists, but the word continuationist is Better. That's the term that's being used. They come mainly from the charismatic and Pentecostal movements, although we have some reformed figures who belong to this group as well. Okay? Continuationism. Number two, cessationism clarified. Cessationism does not mean the cessation of the work of the Holy Spirit. Hindi ibig sabihin ng cessation, tumigil na yung paggawa ng Holy Spirit sa church. 
ang tumigil yung pagbigay ng kakaibang kaloob. Pero yung pagkilos ng Holy Spirit, hindi pa yan tapos. We do not believe that the Trinity, uh, we do not believe, as some believe, that the Trinity consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Scriptures. Nawala na yung Holy Spirit. Bible ang mahalaga. Holy Scriptures. Okay? But the Holy Spirit, they downplay, they minimize. But we believe in the eternal, unceasing, undiminished power of the Holy Trinity. And that's not Father, Son, and Holy Scriptures, but Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Number three. Number two pala. It does not mean the cessation of the extraordinary works of God. Can you give me an extraordinary work of God that still happens today? Conversion. You know what conversion is? It's the passing of death unto life. That's extraordinary. Resurrection yun. A conversion is a spiritual resurrection. That's not ordinary. That doesn't happen every day, although we pray that sana it happens every day, but it doesn't happen every day. It's something extraordinary. God is the one alone who can do that, to raise up a sinner from the darkness of death to his marvelous light. So that's an extraordinary work. What else? Huh? Sanctification. Okay, there are times when we get yung trial and then something good comes out of it. Okay, ano pa? Isa pa na mahalaga rin. Gerard. Providence, anong, anong klase yung providence? Anong, anong example? Kasi providence, yun yung araw-araw na nangyayari na tinatawag natin ordinaryo. Pero anong kaiba? Anong kaiba? Anong extraordinary na providence? Bigyan ko kayo isang simbawa. No? Isang may sakit na hindi mapagaling ng doktor, gumaling. Ha? Yeah, extraordinary healing. Not just healing. Kasi we heal from our colds and cough and flu. We heal, no? But this person has a grave sickness and no doctor can heal him. But then he is healed. Quote-unquote, miraculously. No? That's an extraordinary work of God. Alam nyo, it's not just extraordinary healing, but ordinary healing as well. All healing comes from God. All healing comes from God. Okay? But there are extraordinary instances of miraculous healing. No? And God is the one who works. Okay? So, yan ang clarification. Number three. Yung mahapa dito, yung case, yung ano, yung pangapat. No? Number three. What do those who believe that the gifts have not ceased say about cessationism? Di ba sinasabi nila? Nalaban sa cessationism. Unang-una sinabi nila, wala naman daw utos na wala nang extraordinary gifts. There's no command. Where's the command? Or what can you say? If they tell you, there's no command that the extraordinary gifts subsist. Huh? It's a gift. It's not a command. But I mean, why has God ceased giving the gift? Huh? Uh, that, that's one of the arguments. But I'll, I'll go to that later. Huh? The Bible is real. You have good answers. You know? the, the simplest answer is, uh, on the contrary, is there a command that they should continue? None. No command that they must stop, no command that they must go. Okay? Two, texts that support continuationism. Turn to 1 Corinthians 13. <clears throat> this is one text that the continuationists use to, ano, to promote their uh, belief, ano? 1 Corinthians 13, 9 and 10. 
For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. Controversial passage to brethren. Alam niyo kung bakit? Mahirap maunawaan dito kung anong ibig sabihin ni Paul ng perfect. Ano yun perfect na yan? Ano niya, pagdating ng perfect, mawawala na kasi temporary gifts lang ito because when the perfect comes, this will be done away. The prophecy, etc. Tongues, this will be done away. Question is, what is the perfect? What is the perfect? Huh? Love. Okay, one says love. How about the other? Carl. One says scriptures. Are there any others? Other suggestions? Love, scriptures. One says Christ. Oh, you see, even you are not agreed. One says love. One says Christ. One says scriptures. No? Before, I believe that this referred to the scriptures. Now, I believe this refers to the second coming. Mahirap eh. Mahirap bibase dito ang continuationism. Sabi kasi ng mga continuationist, yung perfect dyan, pagbalik ni Kristo. Eh, they may have a point there, no? But uh, y- yun ang sabi nila. Kaya yung mga gift, magpapatuloy hanggang sa pagbalik ni Kristo. Ngunit, yung iba naman na naniniwala na yung perfect ay eh, scriptures, the perfect scriptures. And then, yung sarado na yung canon ng scriptures, kompleto na, sufficient na, wala nang gift. Which is which? Mahirap eh. This is a disputed text which both, you know, both the cessationist and the non and the continuationist can use no the cessationist interprets this as the bible the non cessationist interprets this as the second coming so it can go both ways mahirap din base diyan three sabi nila why did you divide biblical history into apostolic and non apostolic Apostolic, andyan yung gifts. Non-apostolic, wala na. Sino na sabi sa inyo, i-divide yan? Why did you make that artificial division between the apostolic and the non-apostolic? And the post-apostolic? Huh? Because these are two. Yeah, that's reality. That's reality. Yeah. Ang tanong ko sa inyo, do charismatics and Pentecostals believe that apostles still exist today? Many of them do not. Many charismatics and Pentecostals do not believe that there are apostles today just like the 12 apostles. So even they, even they, in a, in a subtle way, believe that there is a post-apostolic period. Kahit sila naniniwala, kasi hindi na sila naniniwala na mayroon pang mga apostles. Yeah, kahit sila. Sino mas malaki? 
practical answer dyan. Ha? Pastor Mike. Yeah. One billion Catholics believe in idolatry. So they are right. They worship idols. One billion worldwide. Tama sila. So numbers do not necessarily make a thing right. Word of God, that determines whether a thing is right or wrong, no matter how many believe or not believe, that does not matter. The objective standard of truth is God's word. So the question is not how many believe so that I may believe. The question is what does the word of God say that I may believe even if I'm the only person in the world who believes. Never mind. The important thing is, what does the Word of God say so I can believe in what the Word of God says? Okay? So yan ang creationism tested by the continuationists. Now, next. Creationism depended, and merong seven, brethren, seven arguments for cessationism. Number one, the unique role of miracles. Uh, kasi sinasabi ng mga continuationists, nagpapatuloy pa yung miracle healing powers, ano? Miracle, miraculous powers. Ano? But the unique role of miracles. Miracles do not litter every page of biblical history. There are only three unique periods that God worked miracles through uniquely gifted men. Yung period ni Moses at Elijah, 1445 BC to 1380 BC, or a total of about 65 years. Elijah and Elisha, 860 BC to 795 BC, or a total of 65 years. Jesus and the apostles, 0 to 17 AD, or about 70 years. That amount, 65 plus 65 plus 70, is equal to 200, as against about 4,000 years of biblical history. No? 200 years lang yan, where na, nag, ano ba, nag, uh, nag, nag-ipon yung mga miracles sa period na yan, naipon doon, maraming miracles, panahon ni Moses, panahon ni Elijah, panahon ni Jesus at mga apostol. Kaunti lang. That's just a small percentage of the 4,000 years of biblical history. And even in those 200 years, miracles were not happening every day. Okay? Now, what marked these 200 years was profuse revelation from God. Maraming revelation na nangyayari. Nagsasalita ang Diyos. Ngayon, Paano nagsalita ang Diyos sa mga tao pagkatapos ng Mount Sinai? Because when the Ten Commandments were given, alam nyo, God spoke directly to the people and the people trembled. Even Moses trembled at the sound and sight of the giving of the Ten Commandments. That's in Exodus 20. Now, what happened after that? What did the people request God as to the manner of speaking to them. Huh? Speak to Moses na lang, and Moses speaks to us. In other words, Lord, let us not face you anymore. It's a scary experience. Eh. Our knees are trembling. Nakakatakot naman. And have you been, been to, uh, have you watched the erupting volcano? Hindi pa? You should, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm giving the illustration. <laughs> Yeah, I watched Mayon Volcano erupt from the Legazpi Airport, no? Sarado, of course, yung airport. But nandun yung mga tao sa airport. And you can feel the earth shaking. Nakakatakot talaga. Yung mga bato na lumalabas mula sa vulkan kasi nilalaki ng kotse ninyo, no? Ang lalaki talaga. Tapos pulang-pula, tumutulo yung lava, pulang-pula yung lava. Nakakatakot talaga. But brethren, hindi nagsasalita ang Mayon Volcano. Yung Mount Sinai, nagsasalita ang Diyos doon. So talagang nakakatakot. Sabi nila, Lord, nakakatakot na naman masyado yun. Ano? Eh, pwede ba? Meron na lang kaming tagapamagitan. You just appoint a spokesman and the spokesman speaks to us. Now, 
what kind of office did Moses begin? The office of prophet. Prophet is God's spokesman. Not just messenger, but a spokesman who speaks to the people from God the very words of God. May term dyan sa English. There's a word. What's the word? Huh? Pardon? Mouthpiece. Okay, but what do, what word do you use when you say, I what you speak, I speak. I'm the mouthpiece, no? What you say, I say. Very words. Word for word. Okay, verbatim, no? Verbatim. Yan ang prophet, brethren. Walang leeway ang prophet na mag-inject ng illustration, mag-inject ng anecdote. Walang leeway. What God spoke, no? the prophet had to say exactly what God told him. Word for word. And so the prophet can say, Thus saith the Lord. This does not come from me. This is the Lord's words. Thus saith the Lord. Yan ang prophet. Ngayon, if you came to me during the times of biblical history, during the times of Moses and Elijah, and uh, bamali pala ako. Moses and Joshua. What happened? Moses and Joshua. Mali ako. Pakibura. Moses and Joshua. Elijah and Elisha. May pagitan yan eh. Ngayon, kung ikaw, nag-claim ka na propeta ka, tapos sasabihin mo sa akin, etong salita ng Diyos, thus saith the Lord, bakit? Sino ka ba? Why will I believe you that you are a spokesman of God? Since when did you become God's mouthpiece? Who appointed you? Why will I listen to you? Kunyari, kayo. Ako yung kinakausap nyo. When you, you claim to be a prophet, why will I believe you? Ah, you cannot be a prophet. <laughs> why will I believe you? Put, put yourselves in the place of the prophets uh, Old Testament. What he says comes true, that's one. Yeah, tama. What he says comes true, it happens, no? But right right there and then, kunyari, uh, hindi pa nangyari. Kasi, ang isang prophet, brethren, no? Ito, no? Tandaan niyo sa prophet. A prophet speaks about the future and speaks about the present. It tells the people what will happen in the future and it tells the people what God's word is to them for the present. Yung common mentality kasi sa prophet, he's a for, uh, foreteller, not a fortune teller, but a foreteller, a foreteller of the future. Tama yun. A prophet foretells and he also foretells. Even he tells about the present. Okay? That's one. What else? How would you evaluate? May mga signs. Um, sige, hold natin, May. Yun, yun din. Before that, ano, before the signs, pwede nyo rin gawin, i-examine ninyo ang previous revelation sa sinasabi ng prophet na present revelation. Kasi brethren, ang prophecy, revelatory gift yan, ha? Kasi prophecy. Let's, let's like some. No? Prophecy, the prophet, may revelation A revelatory gift. In the face of insufficient revelation, kulang ang information galing sa Diyos kung anong gagawin, nagsasalita pa ang Diyos sa mga tao at inapoint siya yung office ng prophet para ipaalam kung anong kailangan gawin. Kasi kulang pa yung revelation eh. Insufficient, incomplete. So God had to speak from heaven. He chose mouthpieces called prophets in order to speak to the people and to speak about the future. Now, 
Nasa na nga ba tayo? Nawala ako. Ah, i-evaluate. Titignan nyo kung ano yung sinasabi ng prophet na bagong revelation. So bago yan eh. No, bago. Eh, may previous revelation. Bakit? Meron ang sinabi kay Moses. Kaya rin, binigay na yung Ten Commandments. Let's see here. Sa, sabi sa Ten Commandments, you shall not bear false witness. Sinabi ng prophet, you shall bear false witness against your neighbor. Tunay na prophet ba yan? Hindi. Nagpo-contradict sa previous revelation eh. So, hindi prophet yan. So, kailangan mag-guide itong dalawa. Yung present revelation at saka previous revelation. So, one of the ways to evaluate whether a prophet is a true prophet or a false prophet is... One, if what he says comes true. Two, if what he says conforms to what God has said previously. Okay? Now, the other is signs and wonders, sabi ni May, saka ni Pastor Alex. They are correct, ano? Miracle working capacity was given to the prophets as an accompanying gift in order to validate their credentials and therefore confirm that their message was indeed the word of God to the people. In, in other words, isang paraan ito, malaking paraan, na patunayan na talagang sila'y sugo ng Diyos, mensahero ng Diyos, propeta ng Diyos. Paraan ito para patunayan na talagay silang, sila, talagay, uh, talagang sila'y Totoo. O, tingnan natin. Moses, unahin natin. Exodus 4, 15, 16. Uh, Brother Jerry, pwede bang paribasa? Okay, Moses. Exodus 4, 15, 16. Pinapakita, natin, pinapakita sa atin ang purpose ng miracles dito. <clears throat> Okay, nakita ba niyo nangyari dyan? God calls Moses to be his spokesman. Moses hesitates. Lord, I'm not gifted. O sige, you call Aaron. No? Aaron will be the spokesman. You will play God to Aaron. What, what I tell you, you tell Aaron, and Aaron will be the spokesman. Kunyari, ikaw yung Diyos. Lahat ng sinasabi mo, eksakto si Aaron ang magsasabi. That's basically yung prophecy. No? O oh, ngayon, ano nangyari sa Exodus 4.1? Exodus 4.1. Anong sinabi ni Moses sa Exodus 4.1? Then Moses said, What if they will not believe me or listen to what I say? This happened, of course, before 16. Ano? For they may say, The Lord has not appeared to you. The Lord said to him, What's that in your hand? And he said, A staff. Then he said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. But the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand and grasp it by its tail. So he stretched out his hand and caught it and it became a staff in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you and truly called you to be his spokesman. Nakita ba nyo? Sabi niya sa verse 1, eh, paano kung hindi sila maniwala sa akin na ako'y sugo mo? Galing ako sa deserto, papasok ako ng Egypt, paano kung hindi sila makinig? Sige, magpakita ka ng Himala. Kaya ba nilang gawin yan? Kaya ba gawin ng ordinaryong tao yan? Maaring kayang gawin ng demonyo, pero, hindi, pero sa pahintulot lang ng Diyos. Ngunit, hindi yan ordinaryo ang nangyayari na yung tungkod nagiging ahas. Oh, di ba? Elijah, 1 Kings 18.36. Linda, pwede mo kayo basa? 1 Kings 18.36. <clears throat> And this is about the Mount Carmel thing, you know? Oh, 
Okay. Hindi ba verse 38, the fire of the Lord in answer to Elijah's prayer fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones licked up the water that was in the trench. So it was a way of proving that Elijah was God's prophet. He was God's messenger. A miracle took place. Apoy, galing sa langit, bumaba. Pagkatapos kinunsum, pati yung tubig, natuyo talaga yung trench. Doon. How about Jesus and the apostles? John 5.36, uh, Hos, uh, John 6.14, Pia, maling John 7.31. Okay. The very works that I do testify about me that the Father has sent me. Kita nyo yung works of wonder. Nagpapatutuo yun na ako talaga ang sugo ng Diyos. Walang ibang makagawa nun, kundi ako. O, tapos yung sunod, 6.14. The multiplication of bread and fish. Even the people agreed. Hey, no one can do this except a prophet. This is one of the prophetic signs to prove that this person is a prophet. And Jesus is indeed the prophet. In fact, Jesus is the final prophet. Uh, then 7.31. <clears throat> Even they anticipated no, that the Christ would perform signs as a prophet. You can also look at John 10, 24 to 25, John 10, 37, Acts 2, 22, and then the apostles, uh, Acts 14, 3, Edwin, Acts 14, 3, at saka... Hebrews 2, 3, and 4, si Dina. Hebrews 2, 3, and 4. Okay. By the hands of the apostles, signs and wonders. Next. Hebrews 2. 3 and 4. Okay, it was uh, God testified through the apostles both by signs and wonders, by various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit. And these were confirmed to us by those who heard. It does not say these were passed on to us by those who heard. Okay, so a point dito brethren, ganito no, ang sinasabi ko. Yung mga miracles na ginagamit na evangelistic tool ngayon were never meant to be evangelistic tools. No? Miracles were never meant to be an evangelistic tool. In fact, sa Luke 16.31, even if a miracle took place and a dead man rose again, people would not believe. You know, people do not believe even if a dead man rose again. It's not also a means of alleviating human suffering. Yung miracles of healing. The purpose of miracles was to give credibility to God's messengers in previous times and therefore to confirm that the message that they had was truly from God. Yun ang purpose ng miracles. Yun ang unique purpose ng miracles. Hindi necessarily pagpapagaling 
o kaya pagpapahayag ng ebanghelyo at magkakaroon tayo ng healing, magkakaroon tayo ng miracle crusade ngayon para maraming maniwa- maniwala kay Jesus. Hindi ganun. Ang purpose nun, i-establish yung credentials na mga propeta, mga spokesman ni Jesus nung panahon na kulang pa ang revelation. Because prophets are there to add to previous revelation because the Bible was yet incomplete. No, revelation was still insufficient. Now, when revelation ended in a complete and sufficient scriptures, we don't need prophets anymore. Now, ito sinabi ni Warfield, miracles do not appear on the pages of scripture vagrantly, saan-saan, and elsewhere, here and there, indifferently, without any reason. They belong to revelation periods and appear only when God is speaking to His people through accredited messengers, prophets, declaring His gracious purposes. Their abundant display in the apostolic church is the mark of the richness of the apostolic age in terms of revelation, pagsalita ng Diyos. When this revelation period closed, the period of miracle working had passed by also as a matter of course. When revelation closed, natural, these gifts would die down. No? Now, number two. We'll end sa number two today. No? The end of the gift of apostleship. Okay? Question ko sa inyo. What determines uh, what determines uh, what, what determines whether one is an apostle or not? What, what are the qualifications of an apostle? Can anyone be an apostle? No. What what are the qualifications then? Carl, pakitas ka na ya. They are witnesses of Christ. Nakita nila si Cristo. How about Paul? Paul was not with the original 12. Is he an apostle? Is he a true apostle? Yes. Why? Jesus met him on the Damascus Road. He saw the resurrected Christ. He qualifies as an apostle. So, has any one of you seen the resurrected Christ? <laughs> if you say yes, you're qualified to be an apostle. Okay? If you say yes. <laughs> okay. No one has seen the resurrected Christ here. No? Huh? So, walang apostle dito. The apostles, therefore, lived during the time of Christ. They were able to touch Him, listen to Him, look at Him, etc. Two. At teka, Acts 1, 21 to 22. May scripture proof. Ano, hindi tayo nanghuhula dito. Acts 1, 21 to 22. Nakalagay dyan, there, nung, nung nawala si Judas, kailangan palitan. 21. Therefore, it is necessary that of the men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning with the baptism of John until the day that he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. You must have seen the resurrected Christ in order to qualify as an apostle. Two. Second qualification. Dito, may mga nagsasalita dito kanina. Tumahimik na. Okay. <laughs> Two. Just that. Yun lang. Ha? Huh? Appointed. Correct. Appointed. He must be personally appointed by Christ. Acts 1-2. Until the day when he was taken up to heaven, that is Christ, after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. Verse 24, And they prayed and said, You Lord, who know the hearts of all men, show which one of these two you have chosen. It's Christ who chooses. O, ano pa? Isa na lang. Miracles. Yeah. Miracles. They had miracle working 
ability. Matthew 10, verse 1 and 2. Jesus summoned the twelve, gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. 2 Corinthians 12.12 12. <clears throat> The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with all perseverance by signs and wonders and miracles. Okay? Now, ito yung qualifications of an apostle. Ngayon, although there is no crystal clear command or statement in the New Testament that the gift of the apostleship has ceased, no one would deny that no person living today and after the apostolic age possesses the three qualifications mentioned. This shows us that there is a difference in the gifting of the Spirit in the apostolic age where he gave miraculous gifts and the post-apostolic age. Nawala yung gift ng apostle eh. Wala nang qualified. So nawala na yung gift. Along with it, nawala yung miracle working power. Kita nyo? So may diferensya ang gifting. The gifting of the Holy Spirit does not continue as is. Something, some things ceased. Apostleship ceased along with it yung miracle working powers ng apostles. Okay? That's where we end today. Uh, yung five, kalakayin natin next week. The next five. Okay? Manalangin tayo. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for clarifying these things to us. We live in a day of great confusion. Marami yumayakap sa mga maling pagtuturo, maling pagkakaintindi ng inyong salita. Eh, bigyan nyo kami ng humble heart dito because we ourselves are students of your word and we need illumination as, as well as them. Uh, hinihiling namin, dinalaan nyo kami sa mga bagay na ito upang lalo naming maunawaan. Eh, pagpalaan nyo ito, tulungan nyo kami na maintindihan namin at yakapin namin ang mga katotohanan ng ito. Kaya amin dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen.